So good day everyone. For today's topic, what we'll be tackling about is on how to copy read or kung paano ba magwasto, magwasto sa pahayagan. Okay? So, first, let's define ano ba yung copy. So, kapag sinabi natin copy, these are the materials that you are using for your magazine or for your newspaper. So, kumbaga, ito yung mga articles, yung mga uh, balita, mga feature articles, mga editorials, so anything na sinusulat sa isang pahayagan. So, ito yung tinatawag natin copy. It also includes photographs or ilang mga figures or ilang mga images na ginagamit natin sa ating pahayagan. So, we call them copy. So, ito yung mga uh, mga bagay na ating tinitingnan when it comes to copy reading, especially the text, especially the articles. And as for the photographs, to tinitingnan naman natin dito yung mga Tama ba yung mga caption na linagay natin doon? So, part din ito sa mga copies na ating pinag-e-edit or ini-edit sa ating pahayagan. And what then is copy reading or pagwawasto? So, from the term itself, yung copy and then yung reading, so ito yung tinatawag nating process of checking for mistakes, inconsistencies, and repetition. So, later on, isa-isahin natin ano ba yung mga mistakes na dapat natin pagtuunan ng pansin, ano ba yung mga inconsistencies na dapat natin tingnan sa isang uh, articles, o ano ba yung mga may mga redundance or mga repetition doon sa mga articles. And, meron din tinatawag na, tinatawag na proofreading. How is different from a copy reading? Proofreading and copy reading. So, Ito yung pinagkaiba nila. So, yung copy reading kasi, ito yung uh, ginagawa mong process or pag edit bago ilagay sa isang layout or ilagay sa isang page makeup ang isang article. So, halimbawa, bago mo ilagala o bago mo ibigay yung, yung copy doon sa magli-layout or ipasa sa kanya yung layout, dumadaan muna ito sa process of editing. So, sino gumagawa nito? Yung mga editors. So, yung bawat section ng pahayagan, meron tayong, tayong tinatawag na section editors. Halimbawa, meron tayong news editor na mag edit para sa mga news. Uh, meron tayong mga feature editor, literary editor, na sila naman yung bahala doon sa kanilang mga pages. Kasi imagine, sa, sa tunay na buhay, sa tunay na uh, paggawa ng isang pahayagan, it's difficult for an individual alone to, to revise all the, the text or all the articles. Kung siya lahat sa buong articles or sa buong pahayagan, let's say for instance, merong minimum of 12 or 20 pages at siya lang mag-isa, it will be difficult on the part of that person to revise the whole text. So, napakahirap yung sa part niya. So, kaya meron tayong tinatawag na mga section editors. So, bawat pahayagan, bawat bahagi ng pahayagan, may mga kanya-kanyang nakaatang na section editors dyan para mas mapadali yung proseso ng revision at para mas focus dun siya dun lang sa pagre-revise na yun. Kasi it's very difficult na halimbawa ay ikaw na yung nag-revise ng news, ikaw pa magre-revise ng feature, so magkakaroon kayo na, na tapos meron kang dapat ibit na deadly na kinabukasan ay dapat okay na siya. So mahirap yun sa part ng mga editors. So para kaya dapat na nakatoon ka lang doon sa, sa page na yun, may kanya-kanya mga section editors. So, yun yung ginagawa ng copy reading. Ginagawa sa copy reading. So, bago mo siya ipasa doon sa layout artist, dapat ay na-copy read na muna ito ng copy editors or ng editors ng bawat section. Ngayon, kapag halimbawa ay tapos na siyang i-layout, tapos na siyang i-layout na ilagay na mismo siya doon sa, sa page makeup. Ito na yung magkakaroon na sila kung tawagin natin ay draft copy mga initial copy ng inyong ginawang layout or page makeup. So, yung nailagay na doon sa sa page makeup, siya naman ngayon tinatawag natin proofreading. So, kapag halimbawa ay re-revise na siya noong ng copy editor or ng proofreader doon sa mismong naka-layout na pahayagan na, 
So, ang process naman doon ay tinatawag natin proofreading. So, in short, copy reading is done before the copies are prepared for page makeup and while proofreading is done after the page makeup. So, sa copy reading, medyo tedious ang process kasi dapat mong katayin or i-kill yung ibang mga parts kung kinakailangan. So, dapat sa copy reading pa lang ay nandoon na yung uh, mabusising pag-revise. Hindi ka tulad sa proofreading na tinitingnan na lang yung mga minimal na errors. Let's say, for example, tinitingnan nyo o yung spelling, tinitingnan nyo o uh, capitalization, yung tamang punctuation mark. Hindi, hindi ka tulad ng sa copy reading na pwedeng i-revise noong copy editor yung buong paragraph mo. Kasi may epekto ang pagre-revise ng buong paragraph kapag natapos na yung page makeup. So, imagine, nagawa na ni layout artist yung page makeup at napagkasya niya na sa two columns yung kanyang lineout na balita. Pagkatapos, ang ginawa mo, gusto mong i-kill yung buong paragraph. So, maa-adjust ngayon sa layouting. At may domino effect yun sa mga nakasunod pang mga nakahalayhay na parts ng newspaper ninyo. So, kaya as much as possible, iniiwasan nyo on sa isang pahayagan. Kaya dapat, during the copy reading process, ay very uh, almost perfect na yung isang article. Uh, almost perfect na yung uh, yung copy na binigay sa iyo. So, that minimal na lang yung magiging errors kung meron man pagdating doon sa proofreading part. Okay? So, that is the difference between the process of proofreading and, and copy reading. Okay? Again, before the copies are prepared for page makeup, copy reading. And after the page makeup is done, um, proofreading ang ginagawa nating revision or editing. So, what a copy editor does? I already give you a glimpse kung ano ginagawa nila kanina lang. So, first, they check for and corrects errors in grammar, spelling, syntax, and punctuation. So, syntax, syempre, may kinalaman ito doon sa papaano ba uh, binuo yung pangungusap. Okay? So, very uh, useful dapat yung paggamit ng knowledge natin when it comes to grammar pagdating sa mga ganitong mga usapin. Especially, pagdating sa spelling and obviously pati rin sa punctuation. Very detailed dapat ang pagtingin ng isang copy editor because on the first phase uh, dapat ay less error or as much as possible walang error ang isang pahayagan kasi napakahirap na ma-release mo yung isang pahayagan tapos marami ka nakitang errors mahirap nang i-retrieve yun. And secondly the copy editor checks for technical consistency in spelling, capitalization, yung font usage. Di ba nga nabanggit ko sa inyo during the layouting procedure natin na dapat ay mag-decide kayo kung ano ba yung gagamitin yung, lay no, gagamitin yung font para sa inyong layout. Ano ba ang standard ng font na gagamitin sa buong pahayagan ninyo. So, font usage is also being taken into account as well as the numerals and the correct hyphenation. Then, checks for continuity errors and make sure that all loose ends are tied. Checks for factual, factually incorrect statements. So, minsan kasi ay nakafocus lang tayo sa tamang grammar, pero hindi natin nakikita na factual ba yung information na nakalagay doon. So, bahagi ng trabaho ng isang copy editor na i-verify din, i-cross-check din kung tama ba yung linagay na informasyon nung nagsulat. Okay? Kasi kapag may errors doon sa kanyang sinulat when it comes to factuality of the information being mentioned in the news article or on the other parts of the newspaper, it has an effect on part of the whole publication. Okay? Sometimes kasi baka mamaya maging libelous ang isang uh, stories. Okay? Tinitingnan din yan kung defamatory ba yung mga nakalagay doon sa isang pahayagan. Okay? Kasi that is a criminal case. Okay? Pwede silang makulong doon kapag may nakalusot na maling information kapag naghabol yung na-mention mong tao doon sa iyong balita. Kaya bahagi sa trabaho ng isang editor ang pag-check ng mga statements or information or the factuality of the information being shared. Then, 
I think I already mentioned this, advance, checks for potential legal liability. The copy editor verifies that your manuscript does not libel others. Okay? Sinabi natin libel, uh, meron mga defamatory remarks na na-publish that might lead to uh, may malicious implication doon sa sinabi niya na identify yung tao na publish yung balita or yung other articles at defamatory yun. So, that can be a ground for libel kapag naghabol yung taong um, na-mention nyo doon sa balita. And, uh, checks for inconsistency within the story. Obviously, dapat ay check niya rin yan kung tama ba yung flow of thought doon sa kanyang uh, ginawang story. So, these are the different copy reading marks. Ito yung pinakang bread and butter, kumbaga, na ating discussion that you should be familiar with para kapag kayo ay nagre-revise na ng inyong mga manuscripts o ng inyong mga articles, this can be very useful. It's not only useful on part of journalism, but also in other forms of writings. Kapag kayo ay magre-revise ng gawa ng inyong mga future students, di ba, kapag kayo ay naging... Um, nagre-revise naman nyo research. So, pwede, pwede nyo itong magamit. Okay? So, let's take note of the following marks. Okay? So, this part, okay, I am just going to use a high, um, pen. So, the first one, this symbol, similar to letter L, is used if you would like to indent or set a new paragraph. Okay? So, ang ginagawa natin, we just put this on the beginning part of the paragraph. And this one is used if you would like to merge one paragraph to another paragraph. Halimbawa, the student won first place in the contest. And yung pangalawang sentence ay nandun sa second paragraph. So, gusto mo na siya ay magkasama, na sila ay magkasama. So, ang ginagawa mo ay ginagamit mo itong mark na to. Okay? So, to suggest na dapat silang emerge as one paragraph. Okay? Then, this three lines here is used if you would like to capitalize the letter or the words. So, pwede rin yun. So, halimbawa, uh, we put this below the letter. B and C and I and S to suggest na gusto mo siyang a capital B, capital C, capital I, and obviously capital S. Okay? So if you don't if you don't want to capitalize a letter or a word, so in slash lang natin yung letter na yon. So we just put a slash on that letter to suggest that that is for a small letter, and if you would like to abbreviate or use figures, then just encircle the word or the number. So let's say, for example, since we're not using senator, yung, do, yung buong spelling ng senator, and gusto mo ay S-E-N lang, kasi yun naman talaga dapat. So ginagawa mo, ini-encircle mo lang siya. The same is true with, with four. May rules tayo dyan na may i-discuss ko yung rules kung kailan ba dapat i-gamitin yung words na number at yung figure lamang na number. Okay? So, binibilugan lamang natin sila. So, alam na yan ng, alam na yan ng, uh, ng magli-layout kapag ginawa nyo yan. We are also using the same symbol kapag gusto naman natin spell out yung mga words. Let's say, for example, ayaw natin yung abbreviated form na government. Gusto natin silang spell out. Bilugan nyo lang yon. And yung 13, dapat ay figure siya. So, bilugan lang natin yun para just to give a signal or just to give uh, the idea on part of the, the person who will be viewing this work na dapat ay number 13, not the word 13. Then, there are some instances wherein we are typing na nagkakabalibaliktad yung mga words at mga letters. Just like on this case, yung spelling ng university, so nagkabaliktad yung e tsaka v. So you would like them to transpose, to be transposed on their position. So magagawa ka lang ng ganitong um, symbol. The same is true if you would like to transpose words. Let's say the and of, you would like to transpose this position. Use this symbol. 
If you would like to insert a letter, just put this mark below the, the let, before, below the now below the number or below the letter where you would like to insert it. So let us ilagay mo sa taas kung ano yung gusto mong gamitin. Uh, kung ano yung gusto mong insert The same is true if you would like to insert a word. So just put this symbol below the letter or below the number and then ilagay mo kung ano yung gusto mong i-insert doon. There are some instances na nasosobrahan tayo ng mga letters at gusto natin burahin yun or gusto natin burahin yung words. So if you would like to delete a letter, use this symbol. Okay? And uh, the same symbol is used if you would like to delete a word. Okay, as you can see on our example here. Let's say for instance, gusto mong um, burahin at palitan yung letter. Okay, burahin at palitan ng letter. Ganito lang gagawin ninyo. Erase first, use the, the symbol for deleting a letter, and then use the symbol for inserting a letter or a word. Okay, so similar lang yung gagawin on part of the if you would like to change the word, okay? You just have to uh, use the sign or the symbol for deleting the word and then put the symbol for inserting a word and then put it above the letter. And then if you would like to insert period, just put a period and encircle it. You, there's a need for you to encircle it because it will help the, the person who will be viewing your work to easily identify that this is the revision made. Kasi kapag walang bilog yan, malilito yan. So, kaya kailangan bilugan for it to be easily noticed. If you would like to insert a comma, this symbol is used. Okay? If you would like to insert apostrophe, this symbol is used. Okay? And if you would like to insert quotation marks, this is used. This symbol. Okay? If you would like to insert hyphen, then use the symbol. Okay? Let's say, nagkadugtong o nagkadikit ng mga words at gusto nyo silang paghiwalayin, naglalagay tayo ng parang letter Z in between those words to indicate that they should be separated. And if you would like to connect them, Connect but leave space. Again, connect but leave space. Kasi kapag ginanyan nyo lang yan, okay, parang min, gusto nyo lang siyang pagdikitin. But if you would like, if you will be using this, it means to say, pagdikitin nyo sila. Nag-delete ka ng word dito at gusto nyo silang pagdikitin. Okay? If you would like them to be close, yung dikit talaga, then this symbol is used. Ang step ginagamit, halimbawa ay, nagkamali ka ng paggamit ng any marks. Let's say, for example, na-delete mo siya accidentally. Na-delete mo ito accidentally, pero hindi naman pala siya dapat i-delete. So, ang ginagawa natin ay laglalagay tayo ng word na step. Ibig sabihin, in the same place. Kumbaga sa Latin term, in the same place. So, it, it indicates na hindi, it, it indicates na disregarded yung ginawa mong maling marks dito. Okay? So, as much as possible, dapat iwas-iwasan nga natin yung yung errors sa ating marks para mas malinis. Isa yan sa mga tinitin, dapat malinis yung ating pag uh, re revise ng ating manuscript or ng ating article para mas madaling maunawaan nung magre-revise ng kanilang gawa. Okay. So, yung more, may pagkakataon kasi na yung isang copy ay umaabot ng two pages. So, let's say, nag-submit ka ng copy mo o ng balita mo doon sa iyong editor at yung copy mo ay merong, let's say, two pages. So, sa so first page, sa bottom part ng iyong papel, let's say, uh, let's say, this is your paper, at sa bottom part ng iyong papel, maglalagay ka dyan ng more. Okay? And bibilugan mo lang siya. Okay? So, maglalagay ka ng more dyan. Ayan. Bibilugan, then bibilugan mo. So, it indicates na meron pang pangalawang page. Okay. Pero kung halimbawa ay one page lang talaga siya at wala lang kasunod, so gusto mong sabihin na that's the end of the story or that's the end of the article, so naglalagay ka ngayon ng 30. Sometimes ang ginagamit 
Kung hindi 30, so naglalagay tayo ng 30 at the bottom part of our paper to suggest na that's the end of the story. And yung ibang ginagamit ay yung, yung kung tawagin natin ay hashtag, yung sharp sign. Dati may gumagamit din ng ganyan, yung sharp sign. Sometimes 30. Well, hindi ko sure ko ano yung origin yan, kung bakit 30 or sharp sign. So wala talagang makapagsabi, yun na lang talaga yung nakagis ng symbol for that. Okay? So those are the different marks that you have to be aware of when it comes to copy reading. So ang diniscuss ko lang sa inyo yung mga copy reading marks. May similarities sila sa proofreading. Pero mayroong mga times na may ilang mga symbols na hindi sila magkapareho. Okay? Pero ang mahalaga rito is that you are all particular with the copy reading marks. Because after all, yan naman yung madalas na gamitin talaga sa isang pahayagan, yung copy reading. So these are the pointers in copy reading. Take note of this. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na meron tayong mga rules sa paggamit ng mga words sa mga number at ano yung mga dapat na naka-figure lamang. So the numbers 1 to 9 are written in words while the numbers 10 and above are written in figures. As you can see in our example, yung 4 children at yung 13 children. Yung 4 children binilugan natin para maging words na lang siya ng 4 children at yung 13 children binilugan natin to suggest na dapat ay number lang siya. And of course, in every rule, there's always an exception. So, hindi naman lahat ng numbers na below 9, ay, below 9 ay dapat in in words at yung mga 10 above ay dapat mga naka-words or naka-figure. Hindi naman ganun lagi yung rule. So, meron na exemptions. Yung mga dates, address are always in figures. Of course, October 2. Alam nga naman gawin mong word na 2. Okay, common sense. Yung mga proper nouns may be written in figures or words. Let's say, for example, yung isang pangalan ng company, 2N1, eh yun na talaga yung pangalan niya. So, wag mo na siyang gawing words. So, kung ano talaga yung pangalan niya, na num kung naka-number siya, eh number ang gamitin niya. Kahit below 9 siya, for as long as, na, for as long as that is the beginning of a sentence, it should always be expressed in words. Nasa rule naman ng syntax yan, di ba? Kapag magsisimula tayo ng sentence, at gumamit tayo ng number, dapat ay naka-word yung number. Hindi dapat naka-figure. So, kaya 300 students attend the meeting. Let's say, for example, 3 students attend the meeting. Hindi natin gagamitin yung 3 na word. 3 na figure or 300 na, na figure here. Okay? It's wrong to use this one. Kapag halimbawa ay simula siya ng sentence. Yung paggamit ng first to ninth ay po pwedeng gamitin. Then, look for misspelled words. Okay? Look for misspelled words sa pagkakapi rin. Sa Philippines, kapag halimbawa ay English, ang sinusunod natin ay American English, not British English. So, let's say, color, not color. So, particular naman tayo, di ba, sa, sa spelling ng British English at ng American English. So, again, ang sinusunod natin ay American English when it comes to writing a news article, especially la, especially sa English. So, if a word has more than one accepted spelling, the shortest one is preferred. Halimbawa, yung spelling na judgment at yung judgment na meron i, e, ang sinusunod natin is yung uh, shortest one. Kung baga sa enrollment, di ba meron tayong double L, merong single L, ang sinusunod natin ay yung single L. So, kung ano yung shortest version niya, that should be followed. Okay? So, <clears throat> may mga style guide kasi tayong sinusunod dyan. Yung pinanggalingan ito. Yung mga style guide na to. Kaya, um, ito na yung sinusunod ng mga pahayagan, lalo na sa Pilipinas, para magkaroon talaga ng consistency yung mga pahayagan. Okay? So, the first letter of this sentence is always capitalized, obviously. Proper nouns are capitalized, common nouns are not. Again, proper nouns are capitalized, common nouns are not. Halimbawa, the actor, yun bin received the award. So, since um, common noun ang actor at proper noun ang yun bin, so si the name of yun bin should be in capitalized yung kanyang first word. 
Okay? So, basic rule naman yun sa capitalization. Ito, marami nakakamali rito. Small letters are usually used for title or position. So, Dr. Nancy T. Pascualdo University President. Okay, University President. Small letter. Hindi po natin kinakapitalize yung kanilang position. Extends her gra gratitude to the attendees of the seminar. If it is a title, a capitalized title, let's say Dr. Nancy T. Pascual, of course, capital D, Attorney, capital A, President Christopher Ellis, capital P. Okay? Another one. Spell out um, the, the abbreviations. Let's say department should, uh, should not be abbreviated and government should not be abbreviated. Huwag tayong masanay sa ganun. The abbreviations junior and senior are allowed. So, of course, nasa rule naman yan na hindi natin ginagamit yung J-U-N-I-O-R kapag ginagamit natin siya sa name. When referring to a title, remember the following abbreviated form. Engineer, Attorney, Doctor, Senator, Congressman, among others. Abbreviate Street, Boulevard, and Road when referring to address. Halimbawa ay 1, 2, 3 Street, uh, for its, uh, Boretz, Road, Boretz Road, ABC Boulevard. So kapag ginagamit natin sila doon sa mga address natin, when we're referring to, address, to an address, therefore, um, ginagamit natin ito ay ka nalang mga abbreviated form. Next, acronyms are usually written in capital letters. Pero, check natin kung tama ba ang pagkakagamit ng acronyms. Meron kasing iba na hindi porke um, A, B, C, ang kanilang acronym ay halos lahat ng words sa pangalan ng company na yun ay nagsisimula na sa A, B, at C. Yung iba hindi. Okay, so you have to correct or, or to check kung tama ba ang pagkakakronym ng mga words na yun. When an acronym appears for the first time in a news story, again, for the first time in the news story, it is written after its meaning and it's enclosed in a parenthesis. Okay, so let's say University of Results System, URS in open-closed parenthesis. Para sa susunod na part ng iyong balita, pwede mo lang gamitin yung URS kasi uh, may idea na yung iyong mababasa na kapag sinabi mong URS, you are referring to University of Results System. Now, the first sentence of a paragraph is indented. So, sa copy reading, oo. Pero sa layouting, kanya-kanyang style na yan. Pero in copy reading, in general, yes, it should always be indented. In news story, the rule is one idea, one paragraph only. Now, i-mention ko na sa inyo dati yan na kapag magsusulot kayo ng balita, huwag niyo pagsamasamahin ang napakaraming idea sa isang buong pangusap, sa isang buong paragraph. So, pag hiwa-hiwalay niyo sila. Okay? So, kapag nagka-copyright kayo, tingnan nyo rin kung lahat ba ng mga ideas doon ay related to one another or baka naman may naligaw lang doon at dapat is separate na. Sometimes nga, it's one idea, one, para, one sentence, one paragraph. Usually, ganun na nangyayari sa isang balita. Yung chunk of ideas, pero related, para mas madaling maunawa na inyo mababasa. And there should be no names of unknown persons in the lead. Okay, na sa lead writing na kapag, kapag ang isang tao na na-mention mo doon sa iyong lead ay hindi naman ganun talaga ka-popular at, at halos lahat ay karamihan ay hindi naman talaga kilala yung taong yun, huwag mo muna siyang i-mention. Pwede mong gamit, gumamit ka ng proper na halimbawa, um, the victim was, victim mo na ang banggitin mo doon sa iyong lead, pero sa pangalawa doon mo na babanggitin yung pangalan. Okay? Next. So, the proper use of punctuation marks. Naggumagamit tayo ng period, use a period instead of parentheses in numerals or letters accompanying an enumeration. I use a period between pesos and centavos, let's say 250 pesos, just like our example here. We use a period and abbreviations. Acronyms of schools, organization, office do not need periods. Let's say URS ang kanyang acronym, hindi na tayo naglalagay ng U, period, R, period, S, period. So, just URS without the period. And then, sa paggamit naman ng comma, ang purpose ng, gama, ng comma is to set of identifications. So, if there are a series of, let's say, adjectives or series of words, series of descriptions on a, on a word, of course, ginagamitan natin ng comma. 
So, ang, ang paggamit ng kama, maraming pa rin nagkakamali. Halimbawa, meron kayong three or more series. Let's say, red, blue, and white. Red, blue, and white. Ang ginagawa ay naglalagay lang ng kama between, between red and blue. Pero hindi naglalagay ng kama in between and, and the, uh, its preceding word. Okay? So, dapat meron. So, red, comma, blue, comma, and. And then yung last word. So, red, comma, blue, comma, and. Tapos yung last uh, description. So, naglalagay tayo kapag three or more words na po. Okay? So, take note of that. And that is also used to break a general statement. For a direct quotation, marami pa rin nagkakamali rito. Yung iba kasi ang ginagawa ay yung comma linalagay sa dulo, sa labas ng quotation mark. Tandaan nyo, direct, or, direct quotation mark or any quotation mark, any marks na ginamitan ng quotation at ginamitan ng, let's say for instance, ng period, comma, or, or, or exclamation point, linalagay po natin yung mga yon before the closing quotation. So, katulad nito. Okay? To separate the month and day from the year, obviously. To separate the street, barangay, town, and province in an address. So, ito yung sinasabi ko na nakakalimutan tayo sa paglalagay ng kama. So, maglalagay tayo ng kama dyan. Series kasi yan. To separate facts concerning victims and suspects. Let's say, for example, Holas Burayag, comma, 17, comma, o Barangay San Fernando Norte. So, sa yung ganitong format ng isang sentence, ay usually makikita natin yun sa isang news article. Then, another pointers, in addition to that, is um, the proper use of semicolon or tuldokowit. Use semicolon in a series of names, addresses, or identification. So, Nakakalito kasi, di ba, halimbawa, kung puro comma ang ginagamit natin. So, so, in order for us to break that one, to, to avoid yung smoothness ng pagbabasa natin, sinaseparate natin sila using a semicolon. Halimbawa, Mark Castillo, comma, president. Then, semicolon. Para to suggest na mayroong makasunod na, 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 na series tayo rito na the same ang format niya. Okay. Joanna Ibe, comma, vice president, semicolon, etc., etc. And of course, use a semicolon between coordinate clauses which are joined by a conjunctive adverb. So, may rule kasi tayo, di ba? When we are joining two independent clauses joined by coordinators, we put a comma before the coordinator. So, that's the rule. Ganun din naman yung rule sa, sa Filipino, di ba? Kapag meron tayong pinagdudugtong, pinagsasamang dalawang uh, uh, sugnay na nakapag-iisa at ginamitan natin ito ng mga conjunctions or pang-ugnay so naglalagay tayo ng kama bago ang pang-ugnay na yun so halimbawa dito sa ating sentence Jason Baldoni plays soccer we put a semicolon however, comma, he does not want to compete for their university kung halimbawa ay uh, gamitan natin siya ng conjunctions or ng coordinator halimbawa, Jason Baldoni plays soccer comma, but he does not want to compete for their university. Kung baga sa Tagalog, si Justin Baldoni ay gustong maglaro ng, ng soccer. Then, use a semicolon in giving election results. Parang katulad nitong ating example dito. Okay? Another one is the use of colon. So, to introduce a series, salimbawa, the following are the materials needed for the project. Ayan. So, naglagay tayo ng colon yun. At ito yung mga series. Colored paper, glue stick, ring, and yarn. Okay? Use a colon between chapter and verse in scriptural references. Then, quotation marks. Okay? So, quotation marks are used in direct quotations. So, in indirect quotations, do not need them. So, let's say, I forgot it, he said. Ang example natin ng direct quotation, kapag indirect quotation, he said he forgot it. So, hindi na natin kailangan ng quotation kapag indirect quotation. Then, next is we have the use of apostrophe to show possession or 
or to show contractions of word. Usually sa English, eh, maraming ganito. I'm, I am, you're, you are. Okay? So, another reminders kapag kayo ay magre-revise na. Tingnan yung mga jumbled words, jumbled letters, and uh, mga words and paragraphs in the sentence. Check for joint or disjoint words. Halimbawa, classroom, na hindi dapat magkahiwalay. Dapat one word sila. Yung new teacher, dapat ay magkahiwalay sila. Ito yung sinasabi ng joint and disjoint words. Delete editorializing. Kapag meron kayong nababasa at isang balita ang inyong at isang balita ang inyong uh, revise at napansin nyo na editorialize siya. Pag sinabi natin editorialize kasi ito yung time na kung saan nagdadagdag ka ng mga pansarili mong opinion, sarili mong opinion doon sa isang balita na wala ka namang source, wala ka namang pinagbasen, kundi sarili mo lamang opinion yun. So, yun yung tinatawag natin editorializing. Halimbawa, the very beautiful intelligent principle, sino may sabi na siya yung very beautiful at intelligent? So, ikaw lang nagsabi nun. So, hindi na dapat siya uh, gamitin. Burahin mo na lang. So, the principle, as, as is, ganun. Halimbawa, the cops are right in arresting. So, wala kang masyadong description to the cops. So, you just said that the cops were right in arresting. Okay? Additional reminders again, check for redundancies or your recurring words, phrases, paragraphs, syn synonymous or redundant terms. So, keep it short and simple as much as possible. Lalo na sa mga balita na ayaw natin yung masyadong maligoy. Kapag nakita natin masyadong maligoy yung isang paragraph or isang sentence, so there's always a need for us to revise them. So, huwag kayong mahihiya na mag-revise na mag-revise. That's for the betterment of the of the article especially lalo na kapag news ang inyong ini-edit na masyadong technical talaga and also may pagkakataon din na there's a need for you to kill some parts of the of the article para magkasya doon sa required space na hinahabol ninyo sa isang pahayagan and remember after editing the news na mention ko na to sa inyo write 30 at the end of the article or you can use the the, the hashtag tawagin natin or the sharp sign if the article is not yet finished, write more at the bottom page. So I have here an example which I revised myself, uh, which I revised. So this is the the article na, let's say for instance, I initially na sinabmit sa akin. So mapapasin nyo rito yung ginawa ko mga revision. So sabi natin dapat ay naka-indent ang bawat paragraph. So we put this sign here at sabi natin ay dapat yung mga numbers below 2 should be expressed in words and if it is at the begin of the sentence dapat in words din siya kaya binilugan natin so we put this symbol here to suggest na dapat ipaghiwalay mo si campus tsaka si were so mapapasin niyo na mali yung spelling ng province so naglagay tayo ng i doon yung insert i next is we insert a comma here kasi yun ay description niya dito <clears throat> okay and also uh, marami kasing College of Education sa URS. Okay, maraming College of Education. Kaya linagay natin, Dean of the College of Education, URS Antipolo Campus, and Doctor. Of course, that's a title. So, binilugan natin yan to suggest na siya ay maging DR. Dr. Juan O. Abaro, Campus Director of URS. So, naglagay tayo ng URS doon para alam natin na we're pertain to Cardona Campus. Okay? And also, Finalist. Ilan ba yung finalist? Dalawa. Kaya dapat may S doon. And dumikit yung awards sa Guru Nation that may space. Yung letter G, it's a proper noun. Yung Guru Nation Awards, so that should be in capital G. So it was a nice show. Editorialize. So binula nat, binura natin. And uh, paka relevant naman yung sa ating news article. And nagdagdag tayo ng word na of here. So, province is a proper noun. Province of result is a proper noun. So, we capitalize P and capitalize R. So, mapapasin nyo rito na P ang ginamit natin instead of R. So, we delete it and we put an insert mark, an insert symbol here to suggest na dapat ay R ang ating gagamitin. Then, here, mali yung spelling, nagjumble yung E tsaka N, so dapat silang i-transpose. And rito, sabi ko nga ay series of words and maglalagay tayo ng comma before end. Dito, na-accidente natin nabura yung 
uh, word na level na dapat ay nandyan lang yan. So, gusto natin i-restore at i-disregard yung correction. So, naglagay tayo ng step. And since this is only one page at tapos na tayo sa ating revision, naglagay tayo ng 30 and then we insert it at the bottom part of our article. So, ito na yung naging revision natin. Okay? So, yan yun yung may kita ninyo. Ito, pin, ito ay linagay ko dyan para makita nyo lang. Pero that should be removed there. So, kung mapapasin nyo, ito na yung naging uh, itsura nyo right after we put those symbols or copy reading marks. Sa Filipino, ganun din. So, gusto natin ay dapat ay naka-insert or naka-indent ang lahat ng paragraph. So, yung official, may kulang na I, sinaglagay tayo ng I doon, ginamitan natin ng insert symbol. Administrative council should be small letter. So, we slash. So, to, to suggest na siya ay small letter. University result system, obviously, alam natin na kulang ng of. So, nag-insert tayo ng word. Si S, it's part of the proper noun, na university result system. So, it should be capitalized. So, we put this uh lines here to suggest na siya ay dapat capitalize. Yung panukalang paggamit ay nagkadikit so dapat natin paghiwalayin. Na may naligaw na high, na quotation mark kung gusto nating burahin so we put this reading uh, this delete mark. And then dito it should be number space tapos 207. So dapat may period doon. So naglagay tayo ng period binilugan natin. And then 207. 207. And then yung s that should be capitalized. So there's a need for us also to add a uh, quotation mark. Ayan. So, naglagay tayo ng insert quotation. Yung spelling ng values nagkamali, so, nagtranspose tayo. Yung commission ng Wicam Filipino is a proper noun. So, capital K, W, at saka F dapat. Okay? Nagkadikit yung naipasang panukala. Space. Ang inihain noong, nagkadikit sila, so, ang ginawa natin, naglagay tayo ng, um, ng uh, space dito, na symbol. So, ang 14 kasi is a date, November 14. So, that should be na figure lamang. So, binilugan natin sila. Yung regular administrative meeting ay di naman siya proper noun. So, kailangan yung slash at gawin siya small letter. And then, gusto nating palitan na instead ng nang ay isa ang gamitin. So, we delete it and we put an insert word here, insert word mark. So, pinata natin ng sa. And then, nag-insert tayo ng... A dito sa isinagawa, space between pagpapulong sa at capital H dito. And also, we would like to remove na because it's awkward in our sentence, so we remove it. And our next part is that we would like to delete itong pack pag gusto natin palitan ng tama. Kasi para sa atin, mas tama yung word na tama dito. At mas madaling maunawaan ang mababasa. So, kaya dinelete natin yung itong pack at naglagay tayo ng insert mark doon. And since we're done with the revision, naglagay tayo ng 30 sa dulo. So, this is now the revised version. Okay? So, ganyang kahalaga na dapat ay aware kayo sa kung ano yung tamang paggamit ng inyong uh, copy reading mark. So, that would be all for today and see you next meeting.